Hi again, welcome to the Garage Jean Pierre. To follow up with my last, uh, one of the last videos, sorry, about uh, the shitty welds that uh, I just put out on the, around Christmas Day, um, I was kind of uh, showing some welds that people were making with uh, weaker, uh, weaker welding machines or not, uh, not very capable uh, processes. So uh, I'll be uh, just demonstrating very quickly with coupons and see how it uh, turns out. Stick welding. Uh, process uh, using some 6010 and uh, 7018 uh, rods and I'll be using um, some wire with uh, MIG, the MIG wire process and uh, we'll make some coupons do some etching and see uh, see how it turns out I'll be using um, let's say higher grade welders these are the uh, 350 amps uh, category welder this is a multi-process uh, made by Linkin it's able of uh, 350 amps and also able to uh, MIG weld, is, so, is also able to uh, TIG weld. Uh, this machine here, I'll be using in this one for the uh, stick welding. It's a Miller Dynasty 350. It's another uh, machine that uh, can just range into the 300 amps, uh, 350 amps uh, capacity. Uh, I'll be using this one for the uh, stick welding, but it's mainly, uh, it's mainly a TIG welding machine with uh, pe pedal. It's also got the cooling uh, cooling unit for a torch that uh, will be able to uh, withstand like the 300 amps uh, currents. So let's uh, let's go and see what uh, what it does. We'll be preparing the stuff and uh, we'll show the uh, results at the end. So just uh, stay with me today and uh, we'll probably learn a few interesting things about uh, welding. Actually, it's pretty nice to have a machine shop around. I can just do my uh, chamfering with the uh, you know, chamfering tool from uh, with carbide inserts. Just uh, easy to do. It's just one pass and uh, no grain, no dust. Quick and efficient. Okay, capping with seventy eighteen boat weld. As we can see here, the first six inches of this uh, big chunk, the first three inches are uh, covered with, uh, not sorry, based with the 6010 uh, base, base pass. After this, uh, been uh, doing the second part with the 7018 base pass again, and the whole thing is just being covered with a 7018 for a cover pass to. Uh, make the, the, the top more flush so it would be machine and uh, actually uh, have a reference for the uh, starting of the, uh, the weld itself.
that makes a gouge. So easy a monkey could do it. <laughs> so easy a Danish monkey would do it. <laughs> <laughs> I killed crummy welds. I'm purposely, purposely crumbing my welds just for you. Cover pass, 30,000, down to the back of it all. I need practice, so sure, 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 don't. Grinder! Okay, now we'll do no prep. <laughs> Couldn't see. Hello, my love. Not bad. How are the roads in Montreal? Because we've had nothing but rain here in the uh, up here. 45,000 regular. Here again, just to make it easier to compare the depth, uh, making a flat surface with the milling machine. And so, so much easier like this. Okay, for the different sections on the, uh, just a surface weld, I just kind of uh, cleaned up a little bit, like by maybe one or two thousandths in the uh, in steel, so we can see uh, how much it did penetrate. Minus a thousand or two, but I don't think that's that uh, relevant. This is the side with the, um, the V-groove in there, the prep. Uh, I cleaned up uh, near the edge. I, mean, I wasn't very comfortable when I welded the undercut, but that doesn't affect the bottom of the weld. Uh, that we'll, we will just uh, go to the saw, cut these in parts, polish and etch. Okay, this is how they get very shiny. A nice uh, face cutter, not too fast, high revolution. There you go, about 25,000 cut, 1400 RPMs. One direction only, I don't want the, uh, the back rake on this. There you go. This is how shiny it will get. Need to uh, etch it now. Okay, about uh, 
if you're wondering how we can uh, just etch this pretty fast a good solution this is called pickling paste you, you don't make any pickles with that that's what you use to clean the uh, stainless steel and the uh, different materials when you want to uh, you know get all the uh, ferric metals out of the surface there we go just uh, it acts pretty fast just a little bit of water and uh, we'll let it reveal the two different uh, materials in there that doesn't take very long one or two minutes that's about it at the most okay all I got there is a bucket of uh, clean water there you go this is a 7018 uh, bead there okay let's clean this up I suggest you wear gloves this is pretty strong stuff nitric acid and a few uh, a few of its friends and this is about what we're getting pickling paste absolutely not for pickles okay we're all that uh, manipulation preparation and everything uh, I'll, I'll make some kind of a quick uh, resume of the uh, procedures 750 thousandths uh, solid uh, solid block there uh, 19 millimeters wide this is one and a half inch 38 millimeters wide solid um, made a chamfer on the top part uh, the bottom part was welded in the seam there right uh, trying to stay as close to the middle of the seam as possible the chamfer on the top was uh, 180 thousandths 4.57 millimeters on these uh, solid uh, solid chunks uh, you know chunks of uh, metal okay the results now let's go now for an extreme close-up of the uh, the blocks and we see the edges there this one's got a little void in there it's uh, just a void that it's not repeated uh, all along the uh, the seam we see there the uh, bottom part with no prep 75,000 penetration the top top part with the V prep in there 204 thousandths of a uh, penetration let's go now for the 7018 we see it pretty good top part with the V prep the V prep in there it just goes down a little bit and ends up like uh, I I think this one was a two uh, two pass uh, to cover up the, the whole seam so the what's count what counts in there is the first pass where how deep did go uh, second pass won't affect at all the uh, the penetration because it's uh, once it's melted in there the second pass will never melt this again the but fit with no preparation gives you like 76 thousandths penetration there this is for 718 now let's go for the 30 thousandths uh, of an inch uh, wire let's try to get this as clean as possible I hope we're getting a good yeah I think we're getting a good uh, good picture there we see there the 65 there the crest is right at the end of the uh, the pointer there the 65,000 crest and the 177,000 uh, crest there this is 30,000 wire with uh, maxed out as much as much as you can uh, give it the uh, the current now 30 45 thousandths wire we see uh, the wire there was also maxed out 108 and 28 thousandths penetration right up to the crest there um, on the um, butt part with the prep part 258 thousandths prep uh, penetration sorry it's just like it's really uh, much more than the the other uh, the other wires or the other methods so far even better than the, what you could say like people say stick welding will penetrate more will make a better weld depends uh, how much uh, how much current you can push and how how much warmth you can uh, push in there 
let's go for an overview of the, all the uh, all the blocks now. Let's just uh, go now for a quick recap of this. This is 6010 rods, one eighth of an inch, 3.2 millimeters diameter. The current fed in there was about 100 amps. This is a stick process, 7018 stick process. Again, 145 amps, one eighth of an inch uh, rod, 3.2 millimeters. This is a uh, 30 thousandths wire. It would pump to its max about 180 amps. It's a MIG process. Also, MIG process, the 45 uh, thousandths MIG wire. To, it would pump about uh, 275 amps which was about uh, probably in pretty much near its maximum uh, capacity like uh, before you just burn the tips or uh, the wire vaporizes in the air before getting there and not get get not getting really to follow the um, the plasma the plasma pad or just like it would stick to your uh, to your nozzle or uh, <laughs> just like this stick to the tip there you go. This is what happens when you go uh, overdo it on wire. You just uh, <laughs> it just melts and it it doesn't get very far. Just the uh, plasma arc will get right up and they will stick right up to the tip there. This is what it does. Okay, I'm gonna try to make a quick conclusion to this. Uh, people with cheap welders, 110 volt welders, uh, lower grade 220 volt welders, mostly for MIG. Uh, if you try to weld like solid stock like this, but well, no prep, and uh, you make a nice bead. The bead looks nice. I mean, uh, those guys, I mean, they, they know how to make a, a bead look nice. And uh, to make it even look nicer, they'll grind the top flat to the uh, to the stock. Uh, what's about left there to hold is, at the most, sometimes paper tin uh, penetration weld. So, holding those two two things with a paper tin weld. I mean forget it it's uh, prone to failure if you're doing something that's gonna go on the road hold uh, heavy weights if you make something that's gonna lift uh, lifting device for people um, anything anything in that type you need uh, for lifting people you need 10 times the uh, security factor of the uh, actual load you're gonna lift and for uh, material lifting devices overhead and uh, you need five times the um, security factor it means if you need something that lifts 1,000 pounds or 1,000 kilos you multiply this you know, uh, fact, you know this factor by a factor of 5 for material and you multiply this by a factor of 10 for people so if you use cheap welders I suggest you uh, really learn how to weld uh, there are channels on the uh, on the internet like on YouTube that uh, gives pretty good hints about uh, welding like uh, one of the, I think the most serious I know is uh, Jody at uh, welding tips, tips and tricks is I think to my knowledge the best and the most serious channel about welding even there you can learn lots of stuff on this channel but have your uh, welds and have your um, your abilities controlled by someone that is a welder teacher uh, in welding or whatever I've been welding for about 25 years I started on my own and uh, decided to go to school <laughs> after a while I've been welding for my own and uh, this is where I learned uh, really learned how to weld I mean you need someone to teach you you need techniques you need um, you need more than just uh, a few a few nice beads to uh, find yourself to be a good welder so follow my advice get a good welder and also get good uh, teachers or uh, mentors whatever but have yourself being controlled and uh, examined and <laughs> don't be your own judge on this see you next time